Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I will try to answer in this video another question I've got um, so a few days ago. Uh, that is, how would Java call stack look like when we return some value from both try finally or catch finally if the exception is caught? I'm not totally, totally sure that I understood correctly this question because when we discuss about the call stack, it's really important to know where you are at precisely so the, the call stack looks differently depending on the line of code you refer to but i will try to uh, create an example and by this example and using the debugger let's hope that uh, i managed to and at least clarify your question a little bit and if i didn't uh, get it correctly then let me know and i will clarify it uh, and i will try to um, uh, to create uh, another video to answer that question properly so um, i have created a, a small project here it only has this class and I only have the main method and I have two other methods that uh, I have called them pretty simple A and B. So we know that A is called directly from the main and it returns an integral result, uh, the result uh, which is printed afterwards and then A is actually calling B and uh, I use here a try catch to catch the exception which is thrown from uh, method B and I do return something on try, catch, and finally. So this is this is what I understood from your question that uh, what happens if we if we return both from try finally or catch finally. So I, I have tried to cover all the cases here and uh, discuss um, all the possible branches because they are they are not that many. They are pretty simple actually. So we have this method B that is throwing an exception. Uh, very clearly here we have the exception all the time there is no no situation in which the exception doesn't occur so when we call here method b it's clear that we will never get to this return so that that is because b throws the exception uh, it will be thrown on this line 12 here and that means that automatically from line 12 in my case when running the example uh, it will go straight to line 15 here uh, which is the return of 20 because I have uh, treated the exact exception I have here and that means that the catch uh, block will be triggered in this case and then the finally will also be called now if you remember I think I have discussed this in one of my earlier videos on this channel when you have such a situation which by the way you should never use in a real case scenario always avoid returning values from catch and finally and especially from both of them all together. This is not a good practice and not clean coding. So always avoid returning values from catch and finally. We, we do explain this only theoretically now and uh, I recommend you to know how it works also for your OCP um, exams uh, and for your OCP questions uh, where you might find such scenarios but never use such a case in a real world scenario it is uh, very difficult then to understand and can create confusion and for this reason we do avoid this, uh, these cases. But now when, when you have something like this, of course I will go from B directly to the return of 20 but then it will go to the return of 30 and remember that the last returned value is the one that is actually kept. So you know that you can't actually have something executing after return, but this is a special case in which the, the second return will happen after the first return and the value th 30 will actually override the value 20 that will be returned. So that is, that is why when I call A here, my expectation is that the value which will be um, assigned to the result variable here is actually 30 in this case. And the reason for why it's 30 is because this is the last value that is returned. So when I run this example, what I expect is to see, of course, 30 in my console. Now, after I run the example, only uh, as you can see it, I will also try to place my debugger and run this example with the debugger as well. So let's assume we, uh, we want to uh, see it line by line and see the stack uh, methods, the, the method stack, the, the method a stack call as you suggest here this is what i understand from your question you want to see how the java call stack look like that in my mind is uh, the the call stack of the methods so we run it here with debug with the debugger and see what happens 
So the, the uh, uh, execution stopped on line six and then we can go into it and you will see that uh, method A, of course, um, on its first instruction, it tries to call uh, method B. And this is already, we have a call stack from main to uh, A and that if I go in B, then it will be the throw of the exception. So I will uh, have here reach the case line 22nd where the exception will be thrown by B. And then when I go one step back, of course, the next thing that happens is that the catch is called. So now, now I have here uh, in execution method A, which um, uh, stepped over the return of 10 because when we get an exception here, automatically the catch will be directly executed. And then uh, of course the finally. So we have the return 20 and then the return, return 30, which will override the 20 value. And then afterwards uh, the um, uh, call will return to the line six where we, st where we started from actually. And then the value of the result is 30, which is the last value that is returned. I'm not sure again if this was actually your question, but uh, if not, please let me know and I will, um, I will try to clarify in another video. But uh, this, this is what I understood actually. This is the, the way the call works when we have um, uh, returns from, from both catch and finally. And keep this in mind, never do that, that in a real uh, world scenario. But in case of um, your uh, OCP 11 question exams, you might find this scenario. Always remember that the last return uh, is the one uh, keeping the value. That means in my case, the finally uh, will be the one to um, uh, give the value returned by method A, which is in this case, the value assigned to the variable result on line six here. Thank you very much for asking the question. Looking forward for some other questions that you've got and have a great time for learning.